Hello everyone. It's been quite a bit, I'd say about a week, and so I'm hoping that everybody that at least watches these videos is having a good time, uh, enjoy themselves over the break. I do want to kind of ease ourselves into, uh, especially like the official start of the fourth semester, fourth marking period. So really getting into it, I figured we would start off with a little bit of kind of review set. I'm sure uh, if you haven't already, make sure to read the announcement I posted about the quiz and such. But I figured today we could work a little bit around some review for those topics so you guys kind of have a bit of an idea of what it is going forward. Uh, so again, the main points as I listed in the slides is just following through on what each uh, word means and what exactly we do with it. So to start off, we have a variety of variables. We got big A, we've got big S, we've got big P, uh, we've got a Q. Each of these is just a sentence, some sentence that could either be true or false. Uh, that's a bit of a vague topic uh, because what could actually be true, what could actually be false if I said that the sky is blue? Well, normally, yeah, that's that's kind of what we see it as. Sky is blue. But, you know, we're working in, uh, let's say, kind of a bit of a different universe. Let's say that the sky could actually change and so a sentence like, sentence like this could actually be either true or false. Uh, what about the whole idea that um, this whiteboard is white? Well, very plainly, at this exact moment, this is true. But if I take just a couple of seconds, or probably more like a minute to an hour, to fill up this entire board with this brown marker, that wouldn't be true. And so we kind of take a small little step back from uh, the idea of, no, 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 it's absolutely true. We start thinking of it in the sense of, no, 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 it could be true. This could be white. And if it is currently white, that means it's true. Uh, the best kinds of sentences for this are uh, opinion-based or uh, even just some mathematical ones, where if we plug in and say that uh, X is an even number, so S is any time that X is even. So if we took a look and I said, well, okay, X is equal to five, well, that means that S is false because this isn't even. But if I turn X into a 10, that means S is true. And so that's just the idea of true versus false for these sentences. Every single one of these sentences, no matter what they are, can be either true or false. False. Now, with these uh, sentences, with these variables, we can combine them. But we, when we're working with English or any language for that matter, you know, if I had a sentence T that was my drink is green, And then I had another sentence, S, that was, uh, well, let's just go with the sky is blue. Both of these could be true, both of these could be false, they could be interchangeable, one true, one false. I don't make sentences by putting T right next to S, because then that would make a sentence that goes in a weird direction where it's my drink is green the sky is blue no pause no nothing uh, it's just a continuous sentence and it doesn't follow the standard structure of sentences so we need something in between them that's where our uh, negation conjunction and disjunction come into play for so we've got negation negation is just as implies it takes whatever uh, variable you have, whatever sentence you have, and by adding this little uh, squiggle, I believe it's called a tilde, 
in front of whatever variable you have, it just negates it. Uh, T just before is my drink is uh, green. So, of course, if we said my drink is blue, well, that's that's not green, so that should work. But it is very very specific that you put a not because uh, if you're doing it in the form that well, I'm just going to list something that isn't green, and so it should be fine. This is every single time that your drink uh, is not green. So if you just put blue, well that's one time it's not green. What about if it's red? So you gotta put down that it's red. You gotta write down that, uh, you gotta write down when it's blue. You gotta write down when it's red. You gotta write down when it's yellow. You gotta write down every single one. And so rather than going into the whole uh, spiral of all of that, it just works to say, my drink is not green. And that'll be perfect. Conjunction. Conjunction is when we take two statements, two of these variables, and we combine them together, specifically with an AND. Uh, we could either write it as S and T or we could also write it with this upwards, upwards arrow S and T. These are both equal. And so we would basically, this is just saying that uh, this sentence, we just made a sentence here if we wrote it, my drink is green and the sky is blue. Or uh, making sure orientation is important, we have S first, S being the sky is blue and my drink is green, so orientation does matter uh, in terms of our sentence. And now this sentence could be true or not. The only time it is true is if both of these are true. This entire sentence, all of it, is only true if my drink is in fact green. So my drink is green. And if I look outside, the sky is blue. That is the only time it is this sentence right here is true. So if my drink was blue, right there, this sentence is false. Do it's not true, it uh, doesn't work because of one little change. We then also look at disjunction. So while conjunction is the working with each other for everything to be true, disjunction, each of these variables work separately. Uh, as long as one of them is true, everything is true. So the same way, it is S or T, which we could also write it as this downward facing uh, arrow. S or T, and these are the exact same thing. This is basically just saying, well, as long as we got one of these true, it'll pull all the weight. If we got both of them true, well, that's good, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. We are just looking for one. So as long as my drink is green, then it doesn't matter if the sky is bl uh, blue. It could be red. We're still working with a true statement. So these are our three that we have that we work with normally. So negation, conjunction, disjunction, and we can set up different combinations of them where we could have a negation within our disjunction, not S or T, uh, not S and T. And so it changes it slightly but then we just write our sentence as if we set up a not in front of this S, it would be my drink is not green and the sky is blue. So the only time this is true is if my drink is not green and if the sky is blue. Now we want to work with something called a conditional. Uh, conditional is kind of what the name implies. It's 
it's based on a condition. Something has to be true for the rest of it to be true. Uh, it can go by the term conditional. It can go by the term of an arrow, but it is more commonly known as an if then statement. If something happens, then something else happens. So these are very particular. Uh, there is only one time that this is false, and it's important to note that one time. So uh, the arrow is how we would denote it. If we had some, sent some statement A had this arrow and then some statement B, this would be read as if A happens, then B happens. So that means that any time that A happens, let's, let's put a sentence to A, just so maybe we have an idea for it. Uh, a is the sentence, my shoes are untied. So A is, my shoes are untied. B is, then I will fall. This one makes a lot of sense as it kind of, it can bring together it all. So, if my shoes are untied, so that's true, my shoes are in fact untied, then I will fall. So that means that if my shoes are untied and I did fall, this is true. I had a hypothesis that if my shoes are untied, then I will fall, and it happened to be true because I fell down the only time it is false is if you have your hypothesis and your uh, outcome doesn't happen. So this is me saying that this is for a fact this should always happen anytime my shoes are untied. So when it does when I don't fall down anytime my shoes are untied, this sentence is then false. And so it doesn't work. So we want to remember that when we kind of work into our truth tables. Uh, truth tables are just kind of our set in stone way of looking at these that uh, rather than trying to think of this as a word problem, we think bring it back into kind of mathematics where if you have some input, you have some output, and that's just how it works. But you could also think of these as word problems in a way, if that makes that easier, that uh, a little bit of logic involved into it. So if you think of these, an AND is a combiner. Both things have to be true. An OR is either OR. It doesn't matter if one of them is false as long as the other one is true. So it's an OR. You still pick one. If you don't pick either, it's uh, false. With AND, if you pick both, it's true. If you don't pick both, it's false no matter what combination you have and a conditional or if then statement is very big on uh, a hypothesis and an outcome as long as your out hypothesis happens your out outcome should happen uh, you know because if let's say my shoes aren't untied I tied them up well I did what I was supposed to perfect I still fell down well that can happen that absolutely can happen and that's fine because the only time I'm, I should be guaranteed to fall down is if my shoes are untied. I can still fall down if there's, they are tied, but because if they are ever untied, then I'm supposed to fall down and if that is not true, uh, if I don't fall down, then this statement is false. So if you're a little confused by that, uh, then perhaps you might be a little bit more attuned to the idea of the truth tables themselves, more of a mathematical approach. Uh, if you did understand that, excellent. Uh, you're working a little bit more into the logic idea of how the sentence structure causes these outcomes to happen. So based on our truth tables, we will typically be working with two variables, in this case A and B, 
And of course, again, these are sentences that can either be true or false. So now we need a combination of them so that we could work at with them as inputs. Basically, uh, if we think of a, x as a variable for numbers, a and b are variables for true or false. So now a can be true, b can be true. All right, that's one combination, both of them are true. We've got the mix. One could be true, one could be false, and then the first one could be false, and the second one could be true. It's important to remember that these combinations are not the same. Although we have one true and one false, the variable that is true is different in each case. So here A is true, here B is true. So these are in fact different. And then we have it said that both are false. And this will be our base truth table that we work with for all the others. So let's start off with negation. Negation is typically a solo act, so uh, we will have our negation set as the tilde of A, and we set up our box for it. Since it is a single act, the combination of just one term is either true or false. So if we plug in true, so this right here is our in, this right here is our out, and this would be kind of like a function. So if I plug in true to our function, I should get out false. And if I plug in false, it negates it and I get true. So this is a good way of working through all of them, that these are your inputs. The left side is your input, the right side is your output. Now let's take a look at a conjunction. So we've got A and B, using that upwards arrow as our uh, AND statement. So now we want to have, so now we're working with both of these, so we want to work with all four of these combinations. So we take a look at our first combination, true, true. Well, and means that both must be true. Both actually happen. So our very first top row is true. And again, you can think of this right here as your input. You're plugging this into your function, and then you are getting some output. Now, if one of them is false, in this case, B is false, both of them aren't true. Uh, you have to have both true, otherwise it doesn't happen. So this function gives you a false. Same thing happens for the third row. One of them is false, can't happen. Both of them are false. Well, it's gotta be that both are true, both happen, otherwise it leaves you with a false. For the first row, true, second row, false, third and fourth row, false. Then we take a look at our disjunction where we would have A, the downward, downwards arrow for or B. We have our four different combinations going across for our values. This would be our function, this is our output, this is our input. If we plug into our function to trues, well, either of them have to be true. So as long as one of these is true, then it works. So A and B are true, so that works out that we don't have to pick one. They're both true, excellent. Second row, as long as one of them is true, in this case we've got A true and B false for the second row, well, one of them is true, A, so A pulls the weight of B and makes this whole thing true. Same thing happens for the third row, as we take a look from our third row over, that this time B is true, and so B pulls the weight of A, which is false. And our last row, four, neither of them are true, so none of them could pull the weight, so this ends up false. 
these are our standard for the negation, conjunction, and disjunction. All that's left now is that conditional, where if you remember, and I hope you do as we work through this, that the conditional is only ever false if the hypothesis happens and the outcome does not. So in this case, A, arrow, B, we've got our four options for what could happen. And if we take a look, if we plug in for our input into our function and we get an outcome. So if both of them are true, well, my hypothesis happened and my outcome happened. So that is perfect, ideal, exactly what we wanted. To, uh, uh, that happened as a fact, perfect. Now my hypothesis happened, but my outcome didn't. Well, that can't be, my hypothesis should be right. So that means this sentence is now false. Well, what about when my hypothesis doesn't happen? If it doesn't happen, it doesn't really matter what the outcome is, because uh, the outcome could always be anything. Uh, so in this case, this becomes true, and the same thing for the last one. My hypothesis didn't happen, so I'm not really worried about the outcome, and this becomes true. Remembering these combinations based into these, and that ultimately you could either think of them as truth tables or as combinations of sentences. Whichever one works for you, uh, go with that. They're both right, just written slightly differently. Well, I hope that was a little bit helpful. I'm hoping that for many of you, you're able to make up your own sentences as we go into the next quiz rather than reading my mind somehow. And then continuing forward, I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Enjoy the rest of your day.